Breath of the Wild, an award-winning game for its innovation and exploration, open-world discoveries, and beauty. Speedrunners have taken the game to its absolute limits, beating it in under 30 minutes, without any weapon at all, and even completing 100% of the game without taking any damage. But that's not enough. What if you did it blindfolded? The first thing you'll notice is that we're going to be doing a lot of jumping. Front hops, side hops, and backflips are all ideal methods of movement because they have no variation. When you hop in a direction, you go the exact same speed and distance every single time. Not only that, but if you hold the back left trigger ZL on your controller, also known as the shield button, you'll have your camera locked in place. We've eliminated several degrees of movement so we can safely move about Hyrule. Okay, so the reason I checked that object was a woodcutter's axe specifically was because it's an audio cue so I know when to stop side hopping and start backflipping. However, the attempt before this, a random butterfly, I kid you not, swooped in right before the axe and I accidentally collected that instead, thinking it was the weapon. <laughs> Hence why I now check if it's actually the correct object. You'll see here another interesting method of movement. This is called a normalized strategy. The tower that we need to activate is to the left. Using the joystick to turn the camera and link is wildly inaccurate. So we jump onto this wall, resetting our position, and then side hop into this corner. If done correctly, Link should always be in the same spot, and it's easily repeatable if we're slightly off course. Normalized strategy help keep the next part of the blindfold run consistent. Everything you see here is all memorized down to each hop I take. For your convenience, I've taken the liberty of showing you what is going inside my head during the run and what I've memorized. It's on the right side of the screen and it's going to scroll every single time I go to a next step. Got it. All right, that was, I got a little lost there. <laughs> I was like, oh, the, the pedestal's not where I thought the pedestal would be. <laughs> All right, we got it though, we got it though. At least we got the pedestal and we got the tower, which means we have a safe point. Getting the tower here not only allows us to complete all four shrines later, which we need to do to beat the Great Plateau, but it also acts as a save point. Speeding up the cutscenes here, you can see that we always start at the same spot. So if we mess up, we can always load that save now. I bet you're wondering how I get down from the tower though. That was good, that was good. At least we, we got off the tower. Now here comes the longest single segment movement in the run. 103 side hops to the left. Like I said before, I've memorized everything you're seeing, but counting to 103 isn't the most fun thing in the world and there's so many opportunities to accidentally miscount. So I break up 103 into groups of 30. I count to 30, 30, and 30, then sound off the last 13. However, there's this puddle right here that gives it a little audio. Double checking my work of counting, if I get to this puzzle, I know I have six more side hops to go.
and there was the mistake. Did you see it? Blindfolded runs are incredibly precise. I moved an extra two side steps to the right before jumping down to the ledge. This caused me incredible pain, and after not having the audio cue of Link standing on top of the shrine surface, it left me confused. I only heard grass. I didn't know where I was mentally anymore, and my map of the place was just off the radar. I actually didn't realize this until watching it over again, but if I just pressed A here, <laughs> I would have successfully saved myself from being so lost. Anyways, what do you do when you get lost in a blindfolded playthrough? All right, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'll take that. I'll take that. What do I want? I want to die here. I'm try. I was trying to get some sort of death, because like I lost my position there, so I wanted to make sure, like, because I know exactly where we're going to reset. I was like, wait. I was like trying to get to a guardian, but I couldn't see one. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to press continue. I was waiting for the loading zone. <laughs> That's so funny. I end up trying a couple of auto saves that I had, thinking I would spawn back at that puddle, uh, but no avail. I had to reload the save all the way back at the tower in order for me to actually know my position in the game. It was really the only option I had where I can continue the run and get back on track of my memorized route. I'll speed it up here because it's functionally the same, save for those two right side hops that will continuously haunt my nightmares. Got it! Yes! Oh my god, thank- Jeez. Oh my god. I was like, I was, I knew exactly where I was because I like, I heard the grass and I heard, uh, the the con like the 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 whatever behind like beneath Link's feet. I was like, it has to be right. It has to be like right next to here. Like hundred, it has to be. This is one of the four puzzles we have to complete in order for us to beat the Great Plateau. It features the bomb room, which has us blowing up breakable materials. It's also very dangerous if you simply don't know where you're throwing these things. One hit to Link and it's all over. I messed up here, as you can see, where I miscounted and did not move properly to the left enough so I can get onto the ladder. Luckily, when you enter a shrine, the game sets an autosave so you can keep trying it over and over again until you succeed, only resetting to the beginning of the shrine. The coolest part of the shrine, though, in my opinion, is this part. I listen for the sound of the moving platform. When it hits the side, it either makes a loud noise or a soft noise. Loud is obviously when the platform is closest to us. I turn right and then throw a bomb when it's on the far side, detonating the wall blocking our path. Zooming in with the Sheikah Slate then allows me to return to my previous camera position. I wait for the platform to reach me again and hop on. There's just such insane strategies like this for every aspect of the Great Plateau. The Stasis Shrine is my favorite to play, and that's the next one after this. While not as cool as timing the moving platform with just hearing it in the walls, this next movement to get up the ladder is pretty sweet as well.
I wasn't right enough, was I? I didn't skew right enough. Oh! Oh, we're good! Okay, I just had to do one more. Uh, it's normally six up, but for some reason, uh, I got one. Crazy. The next shrine and the route to it are absolutely incredible. The route is a little lackluster to begin with, but ramps up in difficulty as I go on. On the way, though, might be a good opportunity to explain how I memorized all of this in such a short period of time. This is what's going on in my mind. Each line that I've learned has a color or a shape that is associated with it. For instance, we're currently doing sets of 30 forward hops separated by one right or left side hop to get to the stasis shrine. 30 has the concept of the color green associated with it, and the word right is conceptually red, while the word left is conceptually yellow. I say conceptually because I'm not entirely sure what the shade of the ideas are, and I couldn't reproduce them if I tried. A anyways, while counting to 30, each number up until 30 has its own separate color concept, so then even if I lose count, I still have my colors to remember. As for shapes, these blocks of 30 are shown as boxes, separated by smaller cubes. You know, a, all right, a better way to show you how this works is time. Here's how I memorize the calendar. This is what a year looks like. This is what a week looks like. And this is what a day looks like. Also, in case you're curious, this is what subscribing to my channel looks like. Not too hard to memorize that, huh? <laughs> so here's the awkward thing we're doing by the cabin. There's a save point here at the entrance that I can always refer to if I need it. There's also a corner here, which is a normalized location so I know where I'm at. I just, for some unknown reason, cannot pick up these spicy peppers. We need them so that we can survive the cold mountains later in the run. But Nintendo, for some satanic unknown goddamn reason, decided to put the old man's diary next to them. I don't want to read a diary, Nintendo! I need this spice to live! <sighs> in other news, did you know peppers are a fruit? Yeah, pretty cool, right? All right, with peppers ready, all we need to do is cook them. God damn it, Eric. Yes, nice. All right, take two. The cool thing about cooking is that you can normalize your menu, which is why I put my cursor all the way off to the right side first. It's a small thing, but you wouldn't realize how many small things become almost impossible when you can't see the game. I set the time to noon, so we hopefully don't get screwed over by Keese later in the run, because they spawn at night. Now, if you've played this game casually in any capacity, you probably remember the endless pit you have to cross by tiptoeing on top of a log. Could you imagine doing that blindfolded? I was not supposed to make it across that log. That log is supposed to fall dead straight ahead, but it curved to the side. I still somehow made it across due to Breath of the Wild's ledge protection system, but the funny thing is that I had no idea this happened until after I finished the run, because I couldn't see what happened. I just thought things went as planned, and it ended up working completely fine. This cliff that I have to scale in order to reach the stasis shrine 
is the second hardest section of the entire Great Plateau I had to learn and memorize. You'll quickly see why. Breath of the Wild also has this crazy system that prevents you from falling off cliffs if you hold your shield button. I take ledge protection and take it to its max. Blindfolded wise, you can think of ledges as sort of like extra walls that you can enter but not exit. And as you can see here, it's incredibly forgiving. It takes me a couple tries though to scale the entire cliffside, but eventually I get to the last ledge. Yes! Nice! Yes! Okay, alright, we made it to stasis. Oh my god. Oh, that was a little that was a little difficult. That was a little difficult, but we managed to do it. The Stasis Shrine. It's the second of the four puzzles that we have to solve in order to complete the Great Plateau. However, on first look, this one seems impossible to do when you have a blindfold on. Reason being the entire shrine revolves around the concept of timing. How do you time something that you can't see? First thing we do, reload the shrine so that all moving parts reset to their original positions. Then I work my magic. Watch this. Nice. First try, too. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Woo. Oh, my God. I love... I think Stasis Shrine is, is my favorite of the entire blindfolded run. I think I, it's just so much fun. And the strategy is, like, so cool. So, remember how I said that the cliff on the way to the Stasis Shrine was the second hardest part to memorize and practice? <sighs> well, the path to Cryonis is the hardest part of the run to memorize and practice. It takes us through a cold mountain with difficult terrain, not to mention that every single sound cue is different from the rest of the playthrough. We begin our journey with a blind run up a cliff. There's no normalize or incredible strategy here. I literally just hope it works. 
every time. I grabbed this sledgehammer so I know that I've made it to the first ledge. But, you know, it doesn't always work though. But here's where it gets difficult for me. Sound cues change in the snow. Snow might look pretty in this game, but well, I literally can't see it and it's ruined too many of my runs. Hey, speaking of looking pretty though, there's some new merch out that I'm excited to show you guys. With the help of Displate, I commissioned some amazing art that I think you guys will really like. I mean, just look at these things. Like you can get them and more if you go to pointcrow.shop which is where you can find all of my merch. That's pointcrow.shop. Okay, let me just tell you about the horrors of snow. Whenever I'm counting Lynx hops, I listen for the grunt he makes and count based on that. However, with this fluffy hell, it not only makes Link grunt, but it makes a sound when he lands in the snow. This makes it super easy for me to lose track of my counts. We're on our last heart here, so it might be a good time to eat. Not to add on to the sound cues and freezing aspect, but now we have a timer too. If we don't make it within the allotted time, we start taking damage. And then we also have to start all the way back from the beginning. Not much farther now though. We just need to make it over the ridge to get to the Cryona Shrine. That goddamn tree! Oh, it's the tree! Oh my god, I hate this tree. Oh my god. Oh, that tree, man. Oh, that tree. I swear. Here's a fun place too. It's strange that I'm not hopping here and just moving to the side. Since snow sounds different than rock, I'm moving to the left in order to listen for rock. Once I do, I know I can move forward. This is the worst part of the path from Stasis to Cryonis. The variation that Link can move here is like throwing a dart at a moving highway and hoping it hits the chicken on the other side. Have I mentioned how hard this segment is yet? Assuming you get everything right, everything correct up until this moment, you can still get randomly spawning keys, which will attack you. I hope that's good. I hope that's good. I, I don't know if that spot's good. I really don't. It's it, I, I, I went left six instead of left five. And uh, this, this could have screwed up uh, the cryonist run here. I get this chest up here, so I know I'm in the right position again. Unfortunately, this also has a degree of failure if you open it from the wrong angle. Oh, I think it did. I don't think I'm in the spot I think I am. Oh, shoot. I'm not. All right. But I'm not giving up. And without giving up, sometimes you hit that angle just right. Oh, that seems right on. This could be it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I got it.
Yes. Yes. Oh, I think, dude. Oh my God, I figured it out. I figured it out. That was so. That was so clutch. <laughs> I I got lost there, but but with sound cues and 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 having a general sense of where I was at that time, I totally blew it out of the water. That's awesome. Oh my God, that's so great. The Cryonis Shrine is the third of the four puzzles that we have to solve in order for us to complete the Great Plateau. With the difficulty of accurately placing ice blocks and having to fight an enemy in the middle of the shrine, this too seems impossible to be blindfolded. Right? Nice! Yes! Cryonis first try too! That was- dude, that's so great! Oh, that's a, such a cool strat too. I, I love how you kill the Guardian there. That's so awesome. Alright, third try down. We got one shrine left to go to get the paraglider. The weird thing about this route is that the next shrine we have to get to is on the opposite end of the plateau. How do you travel all the way out there? Fast travel, of course. But blindfolded. That should be the tower. If it's not the tower, then it's the bomb shrine, and that's pretty easy to just teleport to the tower from the bomb shrine. And that's the bomb shrine. Okay. So that should be the tower. Oh. There it is. Yep, that's the tower. <laughs> you want to know how I know? Oh. <laughs> that's such a weird sound cue to know. We travel down the tower the same way as before, but while we're doing this, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Crystal Saver, who is the one who did almost all of the routing that you see in this video. Links to their channel are in the description. Incredibly helpful, and I would not have been able to do this without them. The route to Magnesis is largely just walking around this pond in our way. However, there's one or two issues that we can definitely come across.
Oh my god, I can't believe I got that. I, I literally can't believe I got that. I, I was I was panicking there. I was panicking. I, I literally like I like I I thought he was gonna swing at me uh, and everything with the skeletons. I just like randomly moved around and and spammed a. Oh my god, that was insane. I I will never ever be able to pull that off ever again. The Magnesis Shrine is the last of the four puzzles that we have to solve in order to complete the Great Plateau. This shrine has movement like bombs, timing like stasis, and to top it all off, an enemy to defeat like Cryonis. This last puzzle combines all of the worst elements of the past three. If I can solve this, victory is within sight. Just to show you how precise and important normalized strategies are, I wasn't lined up correctly, and because of that, I was what? ever so slightly angled to the right. Good thing, if you reset in shrines, they'll just spawn you back to the beginning. Oops, let's, uh, let's try that again. Yes! Yes! Okay, we got it. Okay, we're all good. Okay, that was nice. That was nice. That was, that was close. That was nice. I was uh, sweating it a little bit with the timing there. So. We got it. Okay, now that all that's left, that's four shrines. All that's left is the paraglider. Oh my god. Oh my god. You can do this.
the last thing we need to complete the Great Plateau is the Paraglider in the middle of the map. While we've completed the shrines, this was by far the most frustrating part of the blindfolded run. The Stalbo Coblins that spawn when you teleport to the shrine. After a little troubleshooting of where I was, I successfully made it out. Now, like the rest of the run, all I need to do is hop, 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 and hop. Just a little bit more. I climbed the ladder to the Temple of Time and made it onto the top of the roof. All we need to do is talk to the old man to the right, so we can complete the challenge. Yeah, that hurts me too. Don't worry, it's not just you. Okay, like I was saying, all we need to do is talk to the old man to the right so we can complete the challenge. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, we did it. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. Let me get the paraglider first. Wait, wait, there's no shot. Wait, there's no shot. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo. Oh my God. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Breath of the Wild. Great Plateau, completely blindfolded in one hour and 38 minutes. Oh my god. Oh, jeez.